Hey guys, in this video, we are going to learn how to do HTTP GET and HTTP POST requests in Angular. And the first thing we need to do is uh, take the data that we have and we, we need to create some sort of REST API service uh, so we can put it on the uh, this free online available services and then we'll write some code to fetch the data from that service. We might get into some course issue, C-O-R-S, cross-origin resource share because your browser may not allow the outside access and so we need to solve solve that and by the way this is a much longer uh, tutorial series on angular and you can follow the entire series i'll provide a link to the playlist here and welcome to Texas tutorials So to begin with, I've already created an empty project using Angular CLI, and the name of the project is ng 5 http get post And I'll upload this uh, once I'm done with it and provide a link in the description so you can play around with it. But basically, if you look at the package.json here, uh, it's created using Angular version 5. And if you use 4, 5, or anything after, this should work. Now, before we set up our API, we should prepare for it. So first thing you want to do is app, go to appmodule.ts and here we need to import something. So we need to import the HTTP client. So we would say HTTP client module uh, from and we are pulling it from angular slash uh, common slash HTTP. If I look at my package.json here I can see it's inside the one of the dependency uh, angular common so that's where we're pulling it from now once you pull it from here i also need to add it into the in the decorator in the ng module decorator as a property so it's the next thing i want to do is i want to go to my main component which is my app component and i'll import the same thing here so i would say import http client from at angular slash common slash http and inside my class here i would need to have a constructor um, that would inject this dependency inside so i would say constructor and inside i can say private http client type this http client all right, so the next thing I want to do is I want to take some data, which I have here. Um, it's an array of objects, and each object's got ID, name, and age. There are multiple options available for you to put. There are lots of services available, but one of my favorite is is called my JSON server, uh, typicon.com. I'll provide a link in the description. And what it does is basically you create your own GitHub repo and you would on the master you would update upload this db.json file it will be automatically available to my json server typicon.com and so basically your username your repo would work like i can show you how it works so i've already created so here is my repo github.com textit.get json faker uh, directory and it has a db.json which is basically all uh, the profiles of three uh, object th that we saw and i can access that through my json server .com, and this would be my github and this is my repo and remember this profile if i remove this i would see his profile which has three objects if i click on here and i can actually filter it if i say one it would filter id equal to one or I can actually do this way. I can say name equal to John and it would filter name John or I can do by age equal to uh, 31 and it would filter by age also. So we can use this URL uh, to filter this record and use using HTTP get. So the first thing I want to do now in the HTML, I want to build this user interface so I would need an input, uh, it's type text. 
I can set up some event called key up. So whenever I'm typing, it would do something. I can say on name key up and inside it would pass event. Event is nothing but whichever element that it's this element, input element. Uh, if I go to app component.ts, I can use that event, which is this one. And here we can say event type any and I can just say console log event dot target dot value all right so now it's time to compile our project so I'm gonna go to command line and I'm already inside the project so I'm just gonna say ng serve dash dash open all right so it compiles onto this local host 4200 and if I inspect element here and if I type something let's say a it's giving me a B is giving me B so as you see it's getting me whatever I'm typing here I can use this information and call it a name I'm, I'm gonna create a variable here call name which is type string um, let's set up an initial value equal to an empty string and inside I can say this dot name equal to basically whatever I'm typing the second thing I need is a button so that I can click on it after entering the name and that would do an HTTP get call so for that I need button and inside the button which is we're just gonna call get uh, profile or something and it will have a click event so if you don't know the click event work like this so within the parenthesis you would say click and equal to you would type some method name so I can say get uh, profile and I would need to implement this method get profile into my TS file so I would go back to the TS and just like this on name key up I will have to implement this so this is where it's going to do the HTTP get but for now I'm just gonna say <clears throat> console log this dot name so now I have this input box where I can say let's say John and when I click on get profile I'll get John here now what we want to do is pass this information uh, to the and make an HTTP get request to get the profile Judy's profile or John's profile now we already have this HTTP client here inside the app component TS so we can use that information and do a little HTTP get so we can say this dot HTTP uh, client dot get and inside we can pass that URL that we just so we have this URL and and here I can say name equal to and inside the template string I can pass this dot name so they should use this URL to query um, by profiles by name. I need to subscribe to this so what it would do is it would keep watching uh, whenever it gets it it would execute it so the subscribe would work like this so scribe and inside we would get get some object uh, we're gonna call it data and when it gets it we can do something with it and the data would be array type and inside I can just say console log data so when it gets it it would console log it so now inside here I can say John and click on the profile and it gives me some data ID name and age now what I want to do is I want to print this age here with the name so instead of simply doing the console log I can say if data dot length which means let's say if the data it, if it returns some data then I want to then I want to get the age so I can create another variable here called age and that's gonna be a number and I can have another variable called found which would be uh, boolean so we can keep track of it I want to say this dot age equal to um, data dot data zero mint zeroth element dot age and I can say 
this dot found equal to true means we found it and as soon as we type we can make found equal to false so we can say here this dot found equal to false now in html here we can put a break and we can have a div where we can say if there is a found if if equal to found only when it's found we should say span and the content should be name names age is age now let's see how it works so if i say john and get profile it would say john's age is 21 if i say judy get profile judy's age is 31. now that we have done uh get let's do http post but before that i request you to like the video if you enjoyed it so far uh, you can just go below the video and like it uh, and subscribe it if you haven't done so there's a uh, the red button at the right bottom corner um, if you wish obviously so now let's uh, quickly do post so for that i am going to create another button i can just copy and paste here and i'm just going to do something like this and instead of get profile i can say post profile and i can say post profile and i have to create this uh, method inside so i can actually copy the get profile and rename it post profile and here instead of this dot http client dot get we need to do post and instead of passing the name here we should just have the up to the profile and because we are posting we need to post some data so what the what is a post really i can actually create a new profile and post it and the, the server would save it as the new right now we have three profiles um, and it would create a fourth one so the way we do it is we can say our new profile would have name which is let's say call mark or something like that and his age is going to be 41. now here in the subscribe instead of array we, we, we will get an object so we can just simply say any and i'm just going to print what the response might be so i can say console log data all right so i have this uh post profile and if i click post profile um it would give me back the same profile but as you can see it has created a new id so the id is four which is which is a new element technically it's not really creating a new element because it's a fake profile fake uh, api but it gives you that it really posted it so it gives you a response back now if it's your own um, api then you would uh, take the data and post it on the server side but it's not really doing it it just gives you a response that okay new id is for it's smart enough to know that you're creating a new id okay the last part is uh, let's say if you've done everything right but you're still not getting the response back from the server and it is because uh, the course the cross origin resource sharing issue because when you send a request from your browser to that third party server um, your browser uh, need to set a one variable called access control allow origin to that uh, the server name or to star which means allow any third party request from any third party um, server and then there are two ways to do it one would be to just adding a chrome extension if you using chrome and i have already have it here it's the the name of the extension extension is access control allow origin and it basically once you install it, it will take care of it you don't have to do anything or uh, a better way of doing it is actually using interceptor and what it does it actually the request comes through and it would intercept in the middle and it would insert this uh, property into the header the access control allow origin 
and I already written a module for it. And so the name of the module is interceptor module.ts. And inside you have to import a bunch of stuff. And you would write a service here because it's injectable. And the service is called HTTP request interceptor, which implements HTTP interceptor. And you can see it intercepts the HTTP request. Uh, and it has an observable because it has to observe whenever it happens, it, it grabs it. And what it does, it the request, it would clone it and it would set the header and it would set this property called allow control, um, allow origin to whichever the site that you are accessing to. And it would replace the clone request um, in the in the handler and you have to import this into your main app module so I have imported this interceptor module and I also need to import it here once I do that and if I go back here to look at the response and let's say if I say John and if I click on the profile and I have to look at the network and if I look at the network, what's going? So the header here, it's basically sending this name John out. And if you look at the request header, it has access control allow origin set to the, the URL that we specified here. And so this is need to be done. Otherwise, it may or may not work depend on how the security settings on your browser. All right, so that's all folks. Uh, I hope you learned something from this tutorial. And if you did, please like, subscribe, and provide a constructive comment. Remember, provide a comment. Thank you.